What do you think of my awesome powers? This is what you obtained in exchange for your memories, Master. You did this, Shinigami? Is this why I made a pact with you? I don't understand any of this. Where are we? Hmm. Simply put, it's an alternate universe. It's got that kind of vibe, right? An alternate universe? Hey, you don't sound surprised. Come on, it's awesome! You probably think it's cliched, huh? Well, this isn't any old alternate universe. Check this out! Ta-da! This is the Mystery Labyrinth. It's a maze that materializes mysteries from the real world. Materializes mysteries? Unsolved mysteries become lost to time, right? Well, here, they actually take shape as a mystery labyrinth. Now, this maze is the materialized form of the unsolved murders that took place on the Amaterasu Express. This maze... Is the mystery? I have the power to interact with this mystery labyrinth. And that's why we were able to come here in the first place. Anyway. Master, we're gonna beat the Amaterasu Express Massacre Mystery Labyrinth. What happens when we beat it? In every case, there's a hidden truth. And we have to find the truth deep inside this mystery labyrinth. So, if we beat this mystery labyrinth, the truth of that case will be revealed. Naturally, so will the true identity of the killer. Now, let's solve this thing! We'll discover the killer's identity, too? You couldn't solve it in reality, so we're solving it in this alternate universe. They're two sides of the same coin. But, whether or not you discover the truth depends on the person entering the labyrinth. The more complex the mystery is in the real world, the more complex the maze will be, too. Killers in real-world cases throw whatever obstacles they can at investigators, right? Those are also materialized into the maze, so this is gonna be a tough battle. So, you're saying there are traps in there? Yep, looks like you're finally getting it. Now that I've explained it all, let's head into the dungeon. Hold on! I, I don't understand any of this. Seriously, you don't get it? Uh, a mystery labyrinth is a maze based on a real mystery. This one is formed from the murder on the Amaterasu Express. Yep, you're right so far. So, if there's always a hidden truth inside a mystery labyrinth, if we keep going... The Amaterasu Express case will be solved? Yup, you totally get it! What? I don't get anything! This makes no logical sense! Sheesh! This is why you're a benchwarmer detective. You're in an alternate universe and hung up on details! Of course I am! Okay... I'll explain more about how it works as we explore the Mystery Labyrinth. If you have any more questions along the way, stare at my boobs for eight seconds. That'll make all your worries disappear. No, it won't! Please, explain everything now! Relax, relax! I'll tell you in due time. Come on, let's go! Time to unriddle this mystery labyrinth! Ah, uh, sorry. I forgot to mention the important keys. Oh, let's see. Keys? You mean for opening doors in the dungeon? Yeah, something like that. But keys in the mystery labyrinth are used to break through mysteries. They're called solution keys, and they're essential to clear the mystery labyrinth. So, where do I find them? Solution keys are materialized clues for a case. Normally, you'd get them during the investigation. You kinda had to rush through the investigation this time around, so let's briefly review the case. 
For starters, try to recall all that happened on board the Amaterasu Express. The Amaterasu Express? Uh... The Amaterasu Express is the only method of transportation in Kanai Ward. It's an automated, unmanned train with five cars. Its doors won't open while in motion, and windows are fixed in place. There were no stops before our destination, so the train kept moving until it arrived at the station. A monitor in the backup control room displays the operation log, and there was no record of the train stopping. So this is a solution key, but why did it come out of your mouth? Mm, what do you mean? So I don't have to use my hands. I worked really hard developing this method. You put thought into this? So that's how words and events you think are clues get transformed into solution keys. Let's keep reviewing what happened in this case. All right. I'll do my best. Uh, the incident occurred inside the Amaterasu Express while it was still moving. Including myself, there were six master detectives on board. Aphex and Poochie's abilities confirmed there were no other passengers on the train. And who died first again? It was Zilch, and the first car's infirmary. I noticed smoke pouring through the crack of the door, and looking through the window, I saw a knife stuck in Zilch's chest. The infirmary was on fire, so smoke quickly filled the whole area. I hurried to open the door, but it wouldn't budge because it was locked. Does that mean this was a locked room mystery? Not really. There's a chance the killer had a duplicate key. Mm, that's no fun. Anyway, I broke the door's window and unlocked the door from the inside to enter the infirmary. By then, Zilch's corpse had burnt to a crisp. I wanted to alert the others, so I moved to the second car. But I found Melamy's corpse there. I think she was set on fire with the liquor in the dining car. Ooh, a flambe! A human flambe! That reminds me, something was off about car two, right before the train entered the tunnel. There was a strange shaking. Isn't that from entering the tunnel? It's like air pressure, uh, wind stuff. And there was a blackout right after, although it only lasted a moment. Yeah, what was up with that blackout? Was there one on the other side of the tunnel too? No, when we exited the tunnel, there was shaking again, but no blackout. There was something else, too. Something that happened when we were in the fourth car. Hmm, I wonder if that's a clue. And the next corpse. Was the little girl in the third car? Yeah, it was Poochie. Another burnt body. Just like the first two cars. secret base thing in the third car? You mean the backup control system? I remember something about that. The, 
control system automatically manages the electricity within the train. When the main control system fails, it will switch to the backup system after one second. You may have amnesia, but you've got a pretty good memory. Anything else you can remember? I did notice that the backup control system was actually operating. And if the backup was on, that means the main system was down, right? What do you think about that? Well, the train never stopped, so it doesn't change the fact that no one could get in or out, right? Yeah, that's true. Next, you found the geezer's corpse in the fourth car, right? He was also covered in burns. Was there anything strange about that corpse? He didn't have any external wounds, but he was holding the cell phone he uses for his photography ability. Oh yeah, that useless ability. It's basically no better than a dash cam. Anyway, forget about the geezer for now. Don't want that old man smell haunting my memories. Next and last is the fifth car. Come on, try to remember it. The body we found in the fifth car was completely charred. It was impossible to tell who it was. But the necklace around the corpse's neck confirmed it was Aphex. We also discovered a stab wound to the chest. Also, judging by things like the plate on the wall, the fifth car appeared to be far more burnt than the other cars. Maybe the room ended up like that because the victim was on fire and running around trying to put it out. Oh, and the blood on the interior lock of the fifth car's infirmary is an important clue, I think. Uh-huh. So, I guess that does it for our review of the case? Wait, there was something else. After the train arrived at the station. According to the Peacekeeper's report, they all burned to death. But that part seems off to me. And they also mentioned there was a knockout drug mixed into the drinks in the dining car. Yeah, I think that's everything of note. <sighs> what a big catch! This should be enough solution keys to solve it. But... I still don't know how to use them. Master, you worry too much. I'm sure it'll turn out fine. Time to head off in search of the truth. Let's solve this thing! Will things really turn out fine? So, this is the mystery labyrinth. It sure looks creepy. Hey, if we keep going, will we really get to the truth? Come on, would I lie to you? I told you the deepest part of the labyrinth holds the truth, right? So, let's go! I'm so horny for mysteries right now! You're... what?
Hey, did something move just now? Oh, that's a cue. Cue? Is that a monster living in the mystery labyrinth? They're not exactly monsters. You are part of the mystery labyrinth itself. They're what materialize the mysteries. You have no intelligence or autonomy. All they do is manifest the mysteries in the labyrinths. But since you are here to defeat mysteries, they're kind of like obstacles. So in other words, they're the enemy. Of course, as a detective seeking the truth, mysteries are your greatest enemy. here that's a mystery phantom a mystery phantom what's that i told you that cues make mysteries materialize right well if there's someone in the real world trying to interfere with the case that person also materializes that's a mystery phantom interfering with the case hey doesn't he kind of look like Swank of the Peacekeepers? If the Peacekeepers are tied up in this, then maybe this incident has something to do with Amaterasu Corporation. You... You're the culprit! Huh? Since all the other passengers on the train are dead, you're the only one who could have done the crime. So you're the culprit! That's the truth behind this case! Master, he's trying to frame you to bury the case. If you can't get past this, you can't reach the truth. What do I do? Should I just run away? A detective doesn't run from a mystery! You gotta defeat him! Defeat him? How? Master, are you ready to give your life for the truth? Huh? Just say, I am. I, I am! Solution Blade. It's a sword with special powers to affect things inside the Mystery Labyrinth. Use that to boom kill the Mystery Phantom! Let's do this! Whoa, slow down! Uh, how do I use this? I'm sure you'll figure it out eventually. Anyway... Damage you take here is nothing to sniff at. It's not like an injury in the real world, but still... The more and more your mind realizes you've been hurt here... Oh boy! You'll wind up brain dead. It'll be game over, time to start from the beginning again. No one wants that, so you'd better be super careful.
draw this out! You're the culprit behind this case! You murdered five bastard detectives! That's the only explanation! Everyone else is dead! You're the only one who could have done the crime! done it. I wasn't conscious the whole time because I drank the drugged coffee in the dining car. It's no use. Your deduction is wrong. You were out the whole time. Ridiculous. You're the culprit. You knew it was drug. That's how you avoided being knocked out. The other detectives were drugged. And you went around killing them all. You're busted. You took the laced coffee and only pretended to drink it. photography footage showed me drinking the coffee. That proves I wasn't faking anything. Cool. <laughs> Did I... Defeat it? See? No matter how weak you are, things will turn out fine, as long as I'm here. He tried to frame me as the culprit. Guess that's what Amaterasu Corp is doing. They want to set you up and call it a day. That's why the peacekeepers barged in as soon as the train hit the station. They probably planned this. So they knew what was going to happen? Then the culprit works for Amaterasu? Or someone hired by them. Either way, the peacekeepers want to hide who did it. So the reason Control Headquarters didn't respond to the emergency calls was because of Amaterasu? Probably. Now that we know what they're aiming for, we're one step closer to the truth. Let's keep this up and unriddle this mystery labyrinth so we can get to the truth. You're awfully casual about this. My life is at stake here. I understand now that the mystery labyrinth is the case's mysteries given shape. But what do you do here, Shinigami? Simply put, I'm the one and only cutie that can directly interact with the Mystery Labyrinth. The progress you've made in the Mystery Labyrinth and solving those mysteries here... It's all thanks to me! Uh, how are you able to do this? 
I don't know what to tell you. I've always been able to do this, so I forgot how. More importantly, you got drugged and knocked out? You are so pitiful, Master! No wonder you're waddling around like a toddler. I thought I was dizzy because I've got this weird ghost thing haunting me. Huh? Making a pact with me won't make you dizzy. That just reduces your lifespan by a lot. You're kidding, right? Right? Anyway, who do you think is the culprit, Master? Do you have any guesses? Uh, if the drinks were drugged in the dining car, the culprit must have been on the train before anyone else. Oh, so then all you have to do is ask around and figure out what order everyone got on board. Oh, wait a minute. You can't, because they're all dead! You aren't taking this very seriously, are you? Forked in two. Which way should I go? This fork in the path is also a materialized mystery, so you should know which way to go if you solve it. First, let's clarify what mystery this is exactly. Uh huh? Uh, how do you do that? Like this! Huh? Master, this is a mystery labyrinth. It's fine. Anyway, take a look. I'll use the blood of the truth seeker as a conduit to expose the mystery blocking the path. Is that a question? That's the mystery standing in your way. You just need to pick the right path and head on through. Six on the train. It must mean the six master detectives, including me, right? If I don't think the culprit is among the six on the train, then I should take the right path, which says no. But if I think the culprit is one of the six on board, I need to take the left path that says yes. Hmm... Which is it? is one of the six on the train, right? Right here! Okay, let's go! Can I go through now? Oh, you got it right? Not bad at all, Master. Ah! Something happened! Why? Did I make the wrong choice? It's trying to bury the truth again! Go get him, Master! Your deduction is wrong! 
Other than the six on the train. You must have had an accomplice. You two committed the crime. In that case, it all fits. Even if you couldn't do it alone. It was possible with an accomplice. You created an alibi for yourself. By drinking the coffee and knocking yourself out. Right. Detectives used their abilities to prove that only six people were on the train. If it was only one person, they could have been lying or an imposter. But two of them means there can be no mistake. Wrong! Your reasoning is completely off! What good does that testimony even do? Your accomplice just wasn't there when those two checked! But came aboard after that. So what if the windows don't open? While everyone was knocked out? You secretly stopped the train and let your partner board. And together, you committed the crime! This way there's no contradiction! Now admit you had an accomplice already! Hey! If... What good does that testimony even do? Let your partner board. I'll thresh through this mystery. The backup control room's operation log showed that the train never stopped. And the doors won't open unless the train stops. So it's impossible for someone to have gotten on during the trip. D damn. Like you're getting the hang of this, Master. You've learned to ruthlessly cut down any who stand in your way. You make it sound like I'm the bad guy here. Hey, I was wondering if the mystery labyrinth is trying to block people from seeking the truth, wouldn't it reject my answers even if they're right? Or maybe the questions themselves could be lies. No chance. A mystery labyrinth has no self-will. It can't lie or create things not based on the real-world mystery. This place is a direct manifestation of a mystery. You can always progress as long as you keep solving it. In that sense, the labyrinth is fair. It won't cheat you. I see. That's a relief. By the way, about the culprit being one of the six of you... How could the culprit commit the crime when all the other passengers besides you were dead? Another 
or a fork in the road? This is how we reach the truth. It reflects how problems are really solved, doesn't it? Well, I don't know if I've ever actually solved a mystery on my own. I don't remember it all. It doesn't matter. You just need to solve the mystery in front of us. after the crime, they'd be dead right now. And that's no fun at all. That's your reasoning? Wait, what's this chain? I told you we share mind and body. The chain is proof of that. Our relationship can never be broken apart. Th that's terrible. Please, you should consider yourself lucky you're being haunted by a cutie like me. I'm so tired. I pulled you up here, so you can walk the rest of the way yourself. I didn't ask you to do that. So you think this path will lead toward the truth, right? No idea. This is a labyrinth. It's pretty common to encounter dead ends. Whoa, watch out! You see, what did I tell you? Dead end. Don't sound so proud of yourself. You chose this path, Shinigami. Hmm. If it's a dead end, maybe the culprit wasn't just playing dead. I searched all five bodies, and they were, without a doubt, dead. Oh, so the answer isn't play dead. Let's turn back. You changed your mind already? Exploring all possibilities is an important part of beating a mystery labyrinth. So awesome. <sighs> By the way, I did say I can guide you through the mystery labyrinth. But I'm not that good at solving mysteries. You could have said that a little earlier. I just want to help. I like when you rely on me, Master. Anyway, what's going on in the real world while we're in the mystery labyrinth? Time has stopped on the other side. We're sort of set apart from the normal flow of time while we're here. In other words, you're still surrounded by peacekeepers. So if we return without solving the mystery, we'll just be captured. As a result, this murder case will remain unsolved and linger in people's memories as a serious crime. Naturally, this mystery labyrinth will also survive. And that creates an even bigger problem. Which is? Leaving a case unsolved means that it will go down in history that way. The more bizarre a mystery is, the more it attracts people's interest. And the more people rack their brains about that mystery, the bigger the mystery labyrinth gets. Eventually, the Mystery Labyrinth would gain enough power to start affecting the real world. 
It would implant insidious ideas into people's minds, creating more murderers and, in turn, new mystery labyrinths. Labyrinths can create endless cycles. That's why it's best to cut it off as soon as possible. It sounds way more daunting than I thought. Other route is commit suicide after the crime. There's no other option, so it has to be the right answer. Hmm. Suicide after the crime would mean... After killing the other four, the culprit killed themselves, right? Is that really the right answer? The mystery labyrinth's roots represent logical deduction. If there's only one route, then it's the only possibility. I think the only option left is the culprit off himself. We just need to find that suicidal pest. suicide after the crime, then the last person that died should be the culprit. Right, because they wouldn't be able to kill someone else if they off themselves already. Nice work! who started the fires must be the culprit. All five burned to death, so the culprit who died last totally burned himself. Come on, let's try again! This must be it! One who burned the other four, then set themselves on fire is Zilch! the idea that the culprit was the last to die, then why would it be Detective Four Eyes? Didn't we discover his body first? According to the peacekeepers, the victims all burned to death, right? But when we first found Zilch in Car 1, he wasn't burnt yet. If that's the case, that means he must have burned to death after that. Although, everyone else we found after him had already died from burns. Alright, so if they all burned to death, then the last one who died could be Detective Four Eyes. I think the culprit killed everyone in the opposite order of how we found their corpses. Starting from Car 5, he killed them in order one by one, then set himself on fire in Car 1. So, Detective Four Eyes is without a doubt the culprit, but he committed suicide, huh?
It worked? See, I told you it would be fine. I'm such a terrific guide. Yeah. Is that the end of it? I guess that's everything. Seems easier than I thought. Mm, what's wrong, Master? I'm wondering if that's really all that happened. Something about this seems off. It does? You think so? Ah! What's going on? The conclusion? Is this the truth behind the case? There's only one door. No other options. Maybe this really is the end. Kind of a simple conclusion despite five people dying. Well, I hope this was a helpful tutorial for you, Master. Wait. Mystery labyrinths contain all the mysteries of the real-world case, including things like misdirection, right? Which means this could be an attempt by the culprit to mislead us. So, you don't think this is the truth? What makes you say that? I'm not sure, but I have a feeling the case isn't closed yet. If so, then this door could be a fake. How can we tell? If you think it's fake, why not try breaking it? It'll be bad news if you're wrong, though. And I won't tell you exactly what will happen. I don't want to affect your judgment. You've already affected my judgment. I guess the only way to find out is to destroy it. How do I do that? So it was fake! It was the culprit trying to throw us off the trail! You said it just quit while you were ahead. It's rare for a fake exit to appear. This mystery labyrinth is way tougher than I thought. Master, don't let your guard down. Make sure you drop your money before you drop dead. I promise I'll show mercy to your wallet. Zilch's suicide by fire doesn't make sense. 
Because when I saw Zilch through the window, there was a knife in his chest. If he burned himself, then why would there be a knife stuck there? <laughs> you little brat! Fine! I'll answer you! I was a knife stuck in the body? Uh, of course I know why! It, yeah, it was to knock himself out! He stabbed himself so he would pass out easy. Then set himself on fire. Dying by fire is a painful way to go. He wanted to make it less painful. The culprit has to be Zilch. He committed suicide by self-immolation. I was the knife stuck in the body. Yeah, of course I know why. He yeah, was to knock himself out. I flashed through this mystery. <laughs> if his plan was to fall unconscious, he would have used the drugged coffee in the dining car. That's a much easier way to pass out. I see. So they're trying to mislead you about the cause of death for Detective Four Eyes. Right. The Peacekeeper said all the detectives burned to death. But Zilch's corpse in the first car is different. To me, it looked more like he was stabbed to death. So the Peacekeeper's report was a lie? But they have no reason to do that. If they wanted to set you up as the culprit, they'd be raising questions by fabricating reports. Yeah, you're right. They all must have died by fire, after all. And for some reason, only Zilch appeared to have been stabbed to death. I get it. So that's what was bothering me. But no matter how hard I think about it, I can't seem to figure out what happened next. Huh? Why's that? I don't have enough clues about Zilch in the first car. I should have investigated it more after discovering the body, but I was too preoccupied with calling for help. So we're stuck right here. I don't see any other routes to break through this mystery. I don't even know what mystery we gotta solve right now. But I do know there can't be a labyrinth without a goal. The truth is always behind a mystery. You wish you had investigated more, right? So, you think you'd have the answer if you'd done that? Huh? Yeah, maybe. Oh, fine. My secret weapon is so draining, I try to avoid using it as much as possible. But, I just love it when you rely on me, Master! I have a bad feeling about this. What are you trying to do? This is all for you, Master! Ready, Master? Huh? Ah! Wait! Wait. Ah! I'm extracting your memory and materializing it inside the mystery labyrinth. 
This is my super cute special weapon. See? If you investigate here, you might make some new discoveries. Oh, the shock from all this is making my head spin. You don't have any time to waste, Master. This was pumped out of that slow brain of yours, so don't assume it'll stick around for long. You have until the pain in your head clears up. Now hurry and investigate. Got it. I'll hurry. This blanket is mostly burned, but some parts near the knife are unscathed. It doesn't look like there's blood on the blanket at all. But how could that be? Oh, so I can get solution keys here too. You may have seen it, but forgotten. That just means you didn't think anything of it at the time. But it is in your memory, so you can use it as a clue. You can do that? You're incredible, Shinigami. <laughs> Go on, keep complimenting me. Huh? This cushion? Was it always there? Also, it looks like it has a hole in the middle of it. It was made by something sharp. What did this? Oh, it's fading. I guess the pain is starting to go away too. Looks like time's up. Well, did you find anything? Yeah, I think I see the contradiction here. Although I'm not completely sold on it. Come on, this is where you're supposed to declare I've solved the mystery. Well, if you think you're on the right track, then I guess we should do this next. Do what? It's for when you're stuck in your deductions. Remember what I said earlier? Every labyrinth has a goal. So even when you're stuck, there's always a way out. And we're gonna find it by working together. Working together? That's right. When I saw Zilch through the window, it appeared as if the knife was stuck in his chest. But in actuality, he stabbed the blanket-wrapped cushion to make it look like he had been stabbed. That's why the blanket didn't have blood on it, even though the cushion was stabbed through. 
Zilch's death was a red herring. It was meant to mislead us. It's a new solution key. If it was a red herring, that means he wasn't really dead. Yeah, Zilch was faking his death to fool us. That knife was just to trick me into thinking he was dead when I looked through the window. But the Peacekeeper's report saying they all burned to death created a contradiction. So the culprit was just playing dead. It's exactly what I said. In a roundabout way, yes. Which means that Dead End in the Abyss could have a new path now. What's wrong? It's too much of a hassle to go all the way back there. I don't want to walk anymore. Well, some guy you are. Besides, you're not even walking. I despise effort and hard work. I want to head back the easy way. Oh, I know. I have a convenient transportation method, thanks to my awesomeness. It lets us go anywhere you've been before. Now is the perfect time to use it. A mysterious force is blocking you from casting this spell. What the? That spell will let you escape from within a labyrinth, but you can't use it inside the mystery labyrinth. Anyway, time to pick again. Sure. See? Super easy! Yeah, sure. But unfortunately, using it does drain a little bit. Drain a little bit of... what? Do you have... MP or something? Your lifespan. My lifespan? Again? So we passed through how did the culprit pull it off junction and have taken the play dead turn again. Now that we have a new solution key, I'm sure we can solve this mystery and access what's ahead. Let's give it a try. Zilch was trying to trick us into thinking he'd killed himself. A bridge! See, didn't I say the path would appear? It's all because we found the right deductive clue to break through. I'm so amazing. You can pat me on the head if you want, Master. Well, maybe later.
We opened the plague dead root thanks to the corpse red herring solution key. So Zilch really faked his death to mislead us. If so, he is absolutely the culprit. Now, we just need to prove it. But even if the mystery labyrinth is fair when it comes to solving mysteries, the real world will be different, right? What if Amaterasu Corp decides to protect the culprit, even if we prove who really did it? Oh, you're worried they'll just cover it up? No need to worry about that. Huh? Why's that? Let's save the fun for later. Oh, the ground! It's falling apart! You better run, Master! Why? Wasn't this the right route? Maybe the logic still has some holes in it. Whoa! I saw Zilch through the window. He was faking his death with the knife to the cushion. That was definitely the real Zilch. The corpse I investigated was real, it just wasn't Zilch's corpse. In other words, Zilch swapped himself out for a real corpse. The corpse was switched right before I broke the infirmary window to open the lock. The blazing fire had filled the room with smoke, so I couldn't make anything out through the window. Zilch used that smoke as cover to switch himself with a dead body. I get it. The fire wasn't only there to show he died from burning. It was also a smoke screen to swap out the corpse. Right. In the smoke, he switched places with a corpse he had hit... Next up, you need to deduce where the corpse was hidden. Because the room was filled with smoke, he needed to put the body somewhere he could access immediately. Where are you thinking? If he needed to get to the body as quickly as possible, only one place makes sense. was hidden right there. Uh, hey! Jeez, one after another. This is really bad for my heart. Shinigami, you might be fine because you're floating around, but this is really tough for me. I can't believe it! He had the corpse hidden under the blanket? So, 
That four-eyed detective was sleeping next to a dead body. I'm so jealous! I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear that. Zilch was lying in bed with the corpse. He got up once the smoke screen was ready. He took the corpse out from under the blanket, pulled the knife out of the cushion, and stabbed it. That way, even after he switched with the corpse, he could just hide to avoid me. Where did Detective Four Eyes hide after that? It must have been someplace with easy access, which must mean... Under the bed. He could have quickly hid there. Which means, if you checked under the bed at the time, you would have caught that four-eyed idiot. But back then, I was in such a hurry to warn the other master detectives. I'm sure he calculated all that, too. He knew I'd panic. Maybe he was planning to take advantage of you from the very beginning, and that's why he let you live. Yeah. I think Zilch was the one who peeked into the restroom while I was sleeping there. I was supposed to be sleeping in the infirmary, so he must have planned to move me before committing the crimes. I passed out in the restroom, but that didn't hinder his plans, so he went with it. Speaking of which, wasn't it Detective Four Eyes who told you to go to the first car? Yeah. He must have planned to make me witness everything and set me up as the culprit. Aha! I think I'm starting to see the whole picture now. Not bad, Master. Maybe you were a big shot detective before you lost your memories. No. If I really was a great detective, I would have caught the culprit in the infirmary before any of this happened. I guess so. By the way, where did he get the corpse he was hiding in the blanket? That corpse? Well, um... Ah! Again! I won't let you go any further! Huh, getting in our way again, huh? If you stand against my ruthless master, He'll chop you up and stir fry you with veggies for dinner. I will not. Assist? It's the rule of the Mystery Labyrinth to assist whoever you're accompanying. Now let's go, Master. I won't let you pass! Enough of your nonsense! You think he swapped with a corpse? It'd be impossible to switch like that. Someone who can replace Silch would need to be the same size as him. He didn't have a bag that could carry a corpse. It would have been down at the station. It'd be impossible to get it on board. There was no corpse to replace anyway. Station. 
He just needed to reuse a dead body on the train. It's Aphex's body from the fifth car. He and Zilch are nearly the same height, and both have stab wounds in their chests. So the corpse that was switched was Aphex's. Ah, damn it! How could someone like you find the truth? anymore even if that's true don't let your guard down the mystery labyrinth isn't over yet stay alert until the very end uh, all right short-tempered idiot would be used for a body swap. Thinking back, the reason the corpses in the first and fifth cars were burnt was to switch them out. But the corpse was so badly burned that I couldn't tell it was Aphex. That must be what the necklace was for, so I could identify him. Well, reusing a corpse is rather environmentally friendly of the culprit, don't you think? It totally went green. I mean, we gotta recycle everything in our day and age, so you gotta get the most value out of corpses too, you know? Hmm. not the culprit. I am a victim who was already killed. So leave me alone! Hey, he ran away! After him, Master! It, yeah. You said the body in the first car's infirmary wasn't me, but Aphex? But you went to car five after car one and discovered his corpse there. How is the corpse transported from car one to car five? That'd require moving past you. That's right, if he slipped past us, when did that happen? Another mystery that needs to be solved.
If he'd gone outside the train instead of through it, he could have passed us. No. That's impossible. Impossible. Impossible! Impossible. 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 Impossible! Turned into a mystery phantom! Get him, Master! Boom, kill him until there's only a sorry slab of flesh left! Outside? The windows are all locked shut. The doors lock when the train is moving. We know the train never stops once. If the windows and doors are shut, there's no way to get out while the train is moving. No issues occur during the train's operation. Even if you could get out, a body could not get in. Well, if they didn't pass through the train. Doors are shut. There's no way to get out while the train is moving. No issues occur during the train's operation. This is the truth! No, there was something strange. The blackout and shaking that happened when I was in car two and car four. Uh. When the blackout occurred and the shaking started, I'm certain something else happened in the train. Maybe it has something to do with the mystery of the moving corpse. But don't be stupid! So what if there was a little blackout and some gentle swaying? Forget the shaking and the blackout! They were nothing but coincidences. The blackout was just a bad contact. The shaking was the tunnel air pressure. There's nothing odd about that. It's all just a coincidence. It's impossible to include that in a criminal plot. Come on. No. Forget the shaking and the blackout. They were nothing but coincidences. The blackout was just a bad contact. I'll flash through this mystery. No, the blackout didn't occur because of a connection failure. It was due to the main control system failing and switching to the backup control system. The blackout occurred during that one second when the system switched over. Is there such a thing as a good phantom? 
after him! You've got to keep solving the mystery and boom kill that mystery phantom! Uh, hey! Master, you may know the cause of the blackout, but what does that have to do with how the corpse was moved? The failed main control system was in car one, where the body swap occurred. If so, then the main control system's failure must have something to do with moving the corpse. So maybe the culprit broke the main control system. He must have attempted to stop the train to bring in the corpse from the outside. But the train never stopped. The operation log confirms the train was moving the entire time. So I don't think he broke the system to bring the corpse in. Then why did the main control system fail? Hmm... It must have something to do with moving the body. But you're unsure exactly how, huh? In that case... You. Anything blocking you in here is also a mystery, so let's solve it to keep on going. <laughs> so this is the question we're facing right now. The main control system must have failed because something happened in the first car. If that's true, what exactly happened? If it's related to the body being moved, then how? Hmm... Master's expression is so serious, he must be thinking hard. Well, as his mentor, I better think hard too! <laughs> the main control system failing, the blackout? The train shaking? Oh yeah! Why did the train shake like that? There was a blackout right before entering the tunnel that was caused by the main control system failing. But the culprit didn't destroy it, so the blackout happened because... Uh... Oh, uh, wasn't there some shaking right before the blackout, too? After the whole train shook, the blackout... Ah, I don't get it. That's right! The train shook right before the blackout. We still don't know what caused that to happen. Whatever it was, it was strong enough to make the entire train shake. It caused the main control system to fail and resulted in a blackout. If it had something to do with moving a body, then what must have happened was... Ooh! Did I give you the assistance you needed? Close to solving the case now? Then it's time to combine our powers and solve this thing! Let's go, Master! Lay it all out! to play the Shinigami Puzzle? That's right! Great! 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 That's right! Nice! That's right! Could it be that 
The first car was separated from the train? Huh? Separated? What? Seriously? Yeah. The reason why the main control system failed was because... The first car was cut off from the rest of the train we were riding in. Let's keep going for now. Um, Master, I don't really get it. What do you mean the first car was cut off? The shaking happened just before the blackout, right? Huh? Did it just shake? What was that? The lights went out for a moment and came back on. At that time, the first car was disconnected from the rest of the Amaterasu Express. As a result, the main control system failed, and after a brief blackout, it switched to the backup. Why cut off the first car? Why go through all that trouble? Of course, to move the body in the train car. To do that. Watch out! Ah! There it is again! It's bigger than ever! How much longer will this keep happening? I feel like I'm gonna suffocate. Now is not the time to be suffocating! Again? We need to resolve the mystery at hand. Given that the first car was cut off so that the body could be moved... Right, I think I see what happened. Seems like you got it. Let's do this! Lay it all up, Master! Puzzle it out! Go, go, go! Nice! Keep that up! That's right! He transported the corpse using the entire first car! That's why the first car was disconnected! Transported the corpse? With the entire car? Nonsense! Shut up! The first car is at the front of the train. Aphex's corpse was in the fifth car, in the back. Even if you detach the front car, how do you move it all the way to the rear? Uh, um... Uh... Master, don't be scared. Lots of villains transform after they've been cornered. C calm down. Stay calm. Think. How could you swap the position of the first and fifth cars? If I can answer that, I can solve this mystery once and for all! How did it happen? That reminds me. Master, earlier when you were talking about the shaking and mentioned the blackout? The blackout only happened once, but the shaking happened twice. Yeah, it definitely shook two separate times. Right before entering the tunnel, and right after leaving it. The first time was when the train car was disconnected. But what about the second? Something happened to the train then, too. The shaking at the end of the tunnel felt similar to when car one disconnected. 
There's no point thinking about it. You're stuck in this labyrinth for all eternity! Master, here it comes! You gotta solve the mystery and defeat him! Your deductions aren't worth a damn thing! Because they're all wrong from the very beginning! Not all the cars were moving on the same track. The track that the Amaterasu Express was on separated into double tracks right before entering the tunnel. So by taking advantage of the double tracks, it's possible to switch out the train cars. The first time the train shook was before entering the tunnel, which was caused by car 1 separating. After that, the separated car 1 entered the other track, while the rest of the train proceeded on the main track. The two tracks rejoin after the tunnel. That's where car 1 connected to the end of the train. This is when the train shook for the second time. Normally, it's impossible for a single train car to function on its own, but the Amaterasu Express is special. The control system will supply electricity as programmed and drive the train. But all train cars on the train have motors that run autonomously. If each train car can operate autonomously, then car one can function on its own! Doesn't that solve everything? It's time you gave up! No! That's crazy! Huh? What? Using your method to rearrange the train cars would connect the first car to the end. Which would leave it behind the fifth car. In other words, it becomes the sixth car, but that doesn't exist. So... You're telling me you found Aphex's corpse in the non-existent sixth car? Oh, you're right. Do you get it? You're the one who's wrong. Everything you've deduced is wrong! No, I'm not wrong. The truth lies just ahead of us. I will prove it to you.
Maybe the Amaterasu Express doesn't have five cars. What if there were only four cars to begin with? If that's the case, then to me, car one could be made to look like car five. <laughs> huh? So, there weren't five cars the whole time, but instead, four? That's why Melanie said the fifth car's door was broken while we were in transit. But you can't access the fifth car, the one at the end. The door appears to be broken and won't open. So, it wasn't broken. The fourth car was actually the farthest one back from the get-go? I'm sure the real fifth car was left behind at the station when we departed. So the train took off with only four cars. There was another car one at our destination. If it connected upon arrival, then the train would have five cars again. So the car one where I was knocked out became the fifth car at the end of the line. And when I was questioned by the peacekeepers, the car one there was another car prepared at the station specifically for this plot. The real car one was waiting at the station's platform, then all the peacekeepers there would have noticed it. So they were all in on it. Or you can assume that the peacekeepers themselves were the ones who prepared the other car one. <coughs> there was another car one, then there will be something that sets it apart from the original car one. For example, the way the window glass was broken in the infirmary will be different from how I broke it. You mean when you use the fire extinguisher to smash the infirmary's window? So they knew you would do that? That's how they were able to imitate it in the new car one? I think I was set up to reach for that fire extinguisher. The fire extinguisher was left in a conspicuous spot in the hallway. They wanted me to use it to break the window. And that's how they pulled off swapping the first and fifth cars while in transit. It was all a trap to set me up as the culprit. Isn't that right? Zilch! <laughs> All right, we're almost there. Let's catch this culprit. That was a pretty solid deduction. <laughs> Very impressive. Of me for seeing your potential. It's so strange. It doesn't feel like I'm learning this stuff, more like I'm remembering it. Maybe I was even a high-ranking detective in a WDO. Now's no time for bragging. You still gotta catch him! Right! Everything feels different here. This is just the calm before the storm. Be careful. You don't know what's gonna happen next. You know, making the first car look like the fifth was a really big trick to pull off. I'm surprised the train cars could disconnect and reconnect so smoothly. The train's automatic operating system must have had it programmed before we departed. Even the trick with the swapping train car? Probably. It had to have been done automatically. Well, it'd be easy for Amaterasu. They own the train. That's what I'm worried about. Even if I obtain the truth here, won't they just ignore what I say and arrest me anyway? I keep telling you not to worry about it. As long as you have the truth, the culprit can't escape. Why are you so sure of that? What is this? Looks 
like a fort to me. With this kind of protection, I bet the truth is in there for sure. You just have to destroy it. So the truth is here. You can't have the truth. It's impossible to destroy this fortress. Just give up and leave! Whenever a culprit takes a last stand like this, you know we're just a step away from unriddling this labyrinth. Master, time to show him how dangerous you really are. After all, he did try to set you up. I'm not worried about that right now. We're so close to the truth. We gotta do this. <laughs> it's boom kill time! Let you have the truth. Go away! Give up and scram! Your deduction is wrong! Go away! Don't come near me! Don't come any closer! Stop it! Switching the first and fifth parts is just your imagination! It's a completely baseless lie! There's no evidence they ever swapped! Solution key to smash through the wall, Master! You're wrong! Huh? Come on! No! There are traces of a swap! The warped plate from Car 5! The reason that plate was burned so thoroughly is because originally it said Car 1. Left as it was, it would have messed up your plot to make Car 1 look like Car 5. That's why you made extra sure it was burned beyond recognition. was the first car. Looks like we need another solution key to boom kill him. Good luck, Master. There is proof. The blood stain on the inner lock of the infirmary in car five. The culprit probably didn't notice it. But I remember, it's my blood. What? When I was trying to get into the infirmary in car one, 
I cut my finger on the glass. When I reached through to unlock the latch, I must have gotten blood on it. But that bloodstain would have been hidden while the interlock was open. That's probably why the culprit missed it. My blood, which was left behind in car one, was found in car five. This proves that someone pulled off the car switching trick. This is the truth of the case. I'm not done yet! What? He's still going? Let us both kill you already! If car one became car five, then where did the culprit supposedly hiding in the infirmary go? You had to have checked the fifth car, but the culprit wasn't there! It must have been hiding somewhere in the fifth car. Probably someplace safe. Here! culprit was hiding inside the main control room, which was locked shut the entire time. I didn't have the key, so I could never have gotten inside. I bet the culprit moved there from the infirmary while car one was running on the second track. If the train's management company, Amaterasu Corporation, was involved, the culprit may have had the key. And then they hid in a blind spot I couldn't see from the window. That's how they got past me! No, it's not me! I'm not the culprit! Great detective work! I call that a critical hit! He seems like he's barely standing! All that's left is to finish him off! Finish him off? Uh, how do I do that? Shove all your evidence into the solution blade and slash as hard as you can!
right up, step right up! I've mastered detectives slain before their time, and Amaterasu Corporation has master in their sights! Truth bombs are about to be dropped! Time for the deduction denouement! The incident unfolded aboard the Amaterasu Express, which was on its way to Kanai Ward. I rushed onto the train as it was about to depart. At that time, the train was made up of five cars. Oh, because you were fast asleep in the Lost and Found Master. If you'd kept snoozing, the case would never be solved. When the train started moving, it was only four cars long. The fifth and final one was left at the station. And so, the culprit scheme had already begun. Meaning Amaterasu Corporation was involved from the get-go. On the train, the master detectives were gathered together in car two. That was the dining car. And the culprit had already mixed a knockout drug into every drink there. who was the first person on the train, so they could prepare in advance and wait for everybody else. I felt unwell, and Melamy went to the trouble of pouring me a coffee. But after drinking it, I started to feel drowsy. I was hearing things at the time and thought that I might be seriously ill, but it was actually the drug. Oh, so you thought yours truly was responsible? Some stones won't do much to a dead guy, but slander stings! The culprit sent me off to car one in order to frame me as the killer. I'm sure the culprit didn't expect you to get sick, Master, but... Since you look like a super easy target, they probably changed their plan and went after you instead. Once I'd left, the other master detectives must have fallen asleep because of the drugged drinks. The culprit then burned everyone to death. Setting all those master detectives on fire! On purpose! What a psycho! This was when the culprit put their plan to frame me into motion. First, they carried Aphex's charred corpse to the infirmary in car one very first body we found. Then, they deliberately left a fire extinguisher near the restroom I was sleeping in. This was done to prompt me into smashing the door later. Gotta have someone get inside somehow, or else nobody would find the body. Next, the culprit entered the infirmary, locked the door, and laid down on the bed with Aphex's charred corpse. Jumping into bed with a charred corpse! And here I thought chivalry was dead! What a gentleman! I'm actually a little jealous. A knife and cushion created the red herring. Hell of a way to pretend to be dead! Furthermore, the culprit set the room on fire just as I was waking up. While you were sleeping, I felt someone come into the restroom. They must have seen me then and timed it. When I woke up in the restroom and went into the hallway, car one was beginning to fill with smoke. Oh, that's some precise timing! I caught a glimpse of Zelch in the infirmary, with a knife lodged in his chest. But it didn't take long for the smoke to obscure everything. That was when the culprit took out Aphex's burnt corpse, switched places with it, and waited for me to enter the room while hiding beneath the bed. It's just like a magic trick! A switching places under a veil of smoke! Meanwhile, I found the fire extinguisher on the floor, smashed the window, unlocked the room and went inside. Like the culprit planned. And that's why they left the fire extinguisher there in the first place. After the smoke cleared, I found Zelch's body burnt to a crisp. At least, that's what I thought. The charred corpse was actually Aphex. The 
culprit had me completely fooled. I question why they picked the time-consuming method of roasting someone to death. Plus, the body was about the right size. I bolted out of car one after seeing the corpse. The culprit was under the bed at that time, huh? They probably laughed at you from there, but never the unfold like they planned. I went on to discover the charred corpses of the other master detectives. Around that time, the culprit came out from under the bed and went to the main control room in car one. Controlling the train from there, they detached car one. out and shaking, and the power source was switched over to the backup system. So the train shook. Oh, was there or was there not jiggling in my glass? Take a guess. While the detached car one was running on a separate track, the culprit went to work. Preparing to disguise car one as car five. What about the juggling? First, Aphex's corpse was carried to the corridor, and the necklace removed earlier was placed back on. Then, the car one number plate was burned... ...so that it couldn't be properly identified! With everything in place, the culprit went into the main control room, locked the door, and waited for the train cars to reconnect. The culprit was riding in car one on the other track, right? Yeah, the train, which was only cars two, three, and four at the time, remained on course. Since we were in a tunnel, I didn't even realize car one was moving alongside us. The train we were on went through the tunnel with only three cars. When it came out of the tunnel, the car with the culprit in it attached to car four. Now behind car four, that car became car five. The swap was pre-programmed into the train's automatic operating system, right? Technology sure is convenient. The culprit riding in car one attached it to the back of car four. That caused more shaking, but there was no blackout this time because the power supply stayed the same. Additional shaking occurred inside my blouse. But the power stayed on. After that, I mistook car one for car five and walked right in. The culprit wrecked it so much I didn't even notice the door I had smashed when I was in car one before. I figured there'd been some kind of brawl. But that was part of the culprit's plan, wasn't it? Also, no one would realize it was actually car one. Corpse, I deduced that it was Aphex from the necklace it had on. But I was just rediscovering the same charred corpse from car one. The disguised corpse and the car switch completely fooled me. Using a dead body? Oh, this is a despairingly brilliant idea! When the train arrived in Kanai Ward, connected to a different, prearranged Car 1. And with that, the train once again had five cars. So much attaching and detaching. What a stupid, crazy, elaborate trick! The peacekeepers were lying in wait at the station. As the sole survivor, I was set up as the one responsible for the murders. And Amaterasu was in on it! That really turns me on! You mean pisses me off, right? During that time, the culprit stayed hidden in the main control room of the disguised car one. And waited for the peacekeepers to haul you in, Master. They were right there at the scene. After burning all the Master Detectives, the culprit faked their own death and tried to frame me as the killer. It was a cunning, cold-blooded scheme. 
and the evildoer who committed these countless contemptible crimes is none other than... Silge Alexander! It was you! Uncovered. Is that it? What's this? It's the truth. It's the soul of the true culprit who made this mystery labyrinth. The soul of the true culprit? Wait, what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> now it's time for the main event! Here we go! It's my time to shine! Surging bloodlust. Overflowing despair. The brilliant soul of Shinigami shall expunge this cursed case. Death to all deplorable. 